Alright guys, welcome back to another Codehaven video and for part two of this tutorial on how to make a calculator app. So picking up where we left off, um, let's first kind of fix this spacing here. And I noticed a lot of calculators actually have this one down by the seven. So yeah, let's just move some stuff around and make it look like a, a normal calculator. Alright guys, so now that that's fixed, um, let's make sure that we can maybe fix this spacing because it looks a little bit wider on the one side. So a cool trick I found is that when you're moving around, you'll notice these grid lines, they actually prevent you from getting the exact measurements that you want at times. So you could just click on a button and just tap the arrow keys and move it by one pixel at a time to exactly where you like it. So just like that, we have pretty much perfect spacing on these buttons and we didn't have to use the grid lines so let's just move this stuff over and it looks like just about everything is perfectly spaced we fixed the numbers down here and now it looks like a normal calculator so now let's get into the back end all right guys so here's the back end um, if you'll notice earlier I had this stuff here by accident so let me just remove this and like I said earlier you have to actually manually find the button that has that uh, method activated and erase it there. And then you will be able to erase it from the back end. And let's quickly save our project. Okay, so in the back end, we have nothing but just the standard class that launches when you uh, run your program. So let's get some functions for every single button that we have. So we're gonna need a click button for obviously like when the user clicks it this method will activate and we can do whatever we want inside of that so let's just go through and do that for every button and it's real nice and easy because you can just double click on each button and it will add it automatically just like that and let's have this as a function and go through all the other buttons as well equals button and decimal and I'm not sure if you if you aren't sure that you uh, activated a button or not you can always go click the lightning symbol and see see I do not have a click function here so double click that and the nice thing is when you're moving around to different buttons and stuff uh, it does keep this tab up and you can just see if you have it or not so let's just make sure that we have every single click function for every single button and so far, it looks as if that's the case. Alrighty. Alright, good. So, we don't need anything for this yet. We're just going to be changing the text property on it. Um, and let's just, let's just save this and give it a run, just so you guys can see what it looks like so far. So, here it is. Um, obviously, none of the buttons do anything. But the spacing is true. And the only downside is if you increase the size here you'll just have all this white space but we can learn how to change that later and obviously if you make it smaller then it actually erases some stuff which isn't good at all so we need to make sure to fix that stuff in the back end later all right so in the back end here we got all these beautiful click functions but they don't do anything so first thing is we're gonna have to declare some global variables here um, so let's just set them up we're gonna need a string for the first set of numbers that somebody might enter. You know, like maybe they wanna add 100 to 100. Well, we're gonna need at least one the first string to store that, so um, we'll just call it first. And we'll initialize it at nothing. And then we'll need another one. So string second equals blank. And of course, you guys can name it whatever you want. I don't necessarily just consider these the best names, but I'm just thinking on the fly here, so we'll just go with this. And we're also gonna need a character to store what type of function they're using. So if they're dividing, multiplying, whatever it is, we're gonna actually need a character to store that. So we're just gonna call it char, initialize it like that. So I've seen a lot of people actually use a text box instead of a label for the user input. And I think what we're going to do instead is every single number is just going to um, 
respond to a keyboard command. So if somebody presses one on their numpad or one on the top left of their keyboard, then it'll press one. And a lot of calculator apps do that, and I think that'd be nice to have. So we'll get to that later, but for now, we're also gonna need a double to hold the result, and we'll just call it result, and we'll set it at zero. Okay, so I think we have most of the variables that we need. And for the next part, we're gonna have to set up the label to respond to what button is clicked. All right, but before we do that, we're gonna have to actually go down and just take care of something real easy here. So all these functions divide, multiply, plus, minus. Let's just take care of that and set function to equal the divide symbol. So if this is clicked, we'll set that function to be divide, and then later we'll handle that uh, with some if statements. So then we're gonna have this function equals, um, we're gonna do an asterisk, because that's nice and easy to use. And then uh, let's just copy this over because it's a lot faster. So let's do that. And for this, it's gonna be plus. And for the other one, it'll be minus. Let's not forget about the equals button and the clear button, which we will also handle later. So let's copy this stuff over to here. And for the clear button, we'll just set it to uh, C. And for the equal button, we will set it to equals. All right, guys, so I was looking over the code and I noticed that I'm pretty sure I'm gonna actually need an input string. Um, and that is because we, we need, actually need something to temporarily hold the first value and transfer it into this first variable. And then when they, you know, then we can clear it, then they'll enter in the second string and then we can pass it off to here. So let's just add another string down here and we will call it um, we'll just call it user input and we can initialize it and nothing. So now comes the easy part. Every time they click a button, obviously we need to reflect that number. So we need to display it on the label. And how we're going to do that is let's just go and make sure we know the name of the label, which we called calculator display. So we're gonna do calculator display dot text. We're gonna set that equal to whatever the number is that we want. And actually it needs to be a plus equals and it needs to be a string because this is just text and we can convert the string to an integer later and we'll do it that way or a double. Um, so for each single one of these, we're gonna do it like this and we can just take this and copy it all the way down and we will change it accordingly. Okay. Let's go back up here and fix every single one. So this is a two, and a three and a four. Oh, that's actually a seven, my bad. Eight and a nine. Okay, and then let's find zero, which is all the way at the bottom here. So this is zero. Now well, that's taken care of. We have all the numbers that we need, and let's move on to the next step. All right, guys, one more thing before this tutorial concludes is we also cannot forget about the decimal button. So let's just add that in here. Um, that's going to be dot and it's not going to be a function it's actually be calculator display text equals the decimal and there we are so we have all the basic functions lined out of what we're going to be doing here and in the next tutorial we'll add more functionality and we will really start to turn this into a fully usable app all right guys so that's going to be it for this video if you liked it please drop a like, of course, and comment your suggestions or thoughts down below for my next videos or any new ideas or things I can improve on. Feel free to subscribe if you like my content, and thanks for watching.